with our radio show. You know, Val, why magic? What got you involved and so taken with being a magician in the first place? Well, I have known that I was a magician from a very early age. And I would say I was must have been uh, four or five years old. And it wasn't for any reason uh, other than I love the, the art of magic. Maybe it comes from a past life. I have no idea. But before I even seen my first magician, I knew I was a magician. Do you remember the first time you ever performed in front of a large audience? You know, how was that experience? Was you was you nervous? Oh, geez, I actually I was deathly afraid to uh, perform in front of uh, an audience. Uh, I used to do. I was known as the school magician from uh, elementary school, you know, through uh, college and everything. But uh, in elementary school, I was deathly afraid. Probably, I had so much passion to be a magician, it's what scared me uh, the most. So I, I used to learn magic, but I actually wouldn't perform it uh, other than maybe for my classmates, uh, you know, friends and family. Uh, but it wasn't until I was, uh, oh, maybe 10 years old, I started doing uh, parties. And, uh, and little by little, I just started uh, developing the magic and the confidence. And... I was a theater major from junior high school to college, and uh, that really helped a lot. But in the beginning, there, there was a lot of fear. Did you have a mentor as you were learning the art, or, or were you self-taught? No, no, yeah, I was self-taught. My brother had a big interest uh, in magic uh, as well, although uh, he never was a performer, uh, but he had an interest in it. So I used to you know, follow him and kind of follow him his uh, footsteps. My brother was actually a big influence. How, how did how did your how did your mother and father feel about you doing magic? Um, we, well, you know, it's one of those things that uh, something you're going to have to really think about uh, the future, and that you're going to have to get a real job some someday. <laughs> 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 and uh, I, of course, I didn't uh, want to listen to that. And I didn't, and thank goodness uh, I didn't, because uh, I could have easily gone in other directions. But uh, I stood, stuck by magic and uh, still doing it today. You know, who who were your inspirations for magic? And, you know, uh, like Houdini and, you know, people like that, Blackstone? Yeah, uh, we, my uh, inspirations in magic, yeah, they would go back to uh, Houdini because... The way I had to learn magic, because it really wasn't very much on television, uh, the, the information wasn't out there. So uh, the library played a big part in my education. So I would read a lot of books, anything about magic. So there was a encyclopedia. So I learned a lot about the history of magic. So I learned about you know Houdini and Thurston and, and uh, the magicians of the uh, early 1900s. Um, so they have a big influence on me because that's from when I was uh, very young. And, um, then there came the movie Houdini with Tony Curtis, and I was really taken by, by that. You know, this is a question that I've asked myself all the time. You know, we've talked to a lot of professional musicians and I've always asked them, you know, what happens when you forget your lyrics on stage? You know, what's it like for a magician on stage when something goes wrong? Do you ever get like people in the crowd that goes like, "Hey, I know how you did that." You know, you know what I mean. How do you react to something like that? <laughs> well, you know, the thing about magic is, it, and it's that rule of life. You know, if something's going to go wrong, it will. Things go wrong all the time, but when you're a magician, you know that things are going to happen because you're relying on, you know if it's threads or mechanics or certain angles and you're relying on certain um, things uh, that uh, shouldn't be seen. So if something can go wrong, and they do, so the magician has to be prepared through his practice. If something does go wrong, how am I going to get out of it? So we prepare for things like this. It would either be taking the trick or illusion into another direction or having an out. 
and have another prop on hand ready to go. So, uh, yeah, when things go wrong, that, that, that plays a big part, and it does happen all the time. It takes a lot of guts uh, to do magic. Well, how, how many times do you practice an illusion before you unveil it to a crowd? Well, you know, there's a thing um, that, uh, well, we profess, and that is to do perfect practice. That is when you learn something, you're in the learning stages, and then you learn it till it's pretty much perfection. So now is when you know it. So that's when the real practice starts to happen. And once you know something perfectly, then you do perfect practice, and that's when you really push yourself and practice, 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 practice. And then you find out all the things that can go wrong. That helps you be prepared. And then you could focus on performance as opposed to what your hands and angles and everything is doing. So perfect practice. Perfect practice. With all the illusionists out there, how, how competitive is the magic industry now? Well, you know, uh, it's magic is wonderful in the fact that it's all about imagination. And, you know, Einstein said imagination is more important than knowledge because uh, imagination is infinite. So magic is infinite in the fact that it's just um, it's just as far as one's imagination will go. So that's why you know new things can uh, always be created uh, and invented, uh, and they are. And with magic, things are wide, wide open. Right? They're open completely. I get a lot of... Uh, magicians from all over the world uh, asking me questions and uh, places like uh, Iran, for instance. I get a lot of magicians out there because magic is new to them, and in certain countries they're not allowed to do magic for one thing, let alone be able to get the tools that magicians use. So I help them out. It's all about imagination. I tell them, okay, use things in the street, like rocks and whatever you can find in your home. And I give them uh, tips on how to do magic without actually having magic shops and and uh, the knowledge uh, and the books and uh, all the things that are easy to get you know, for other magicians in other countries. So, Val, you know, everybody wants to know about your role as the mask magician. How did that character come about? Was it something that you came up with, or were you approached by the Fox Network? Well, I, I was actually uh, approached by the Fox Network. Um, they, they were going to do this series. It, it was going to happen anyway. And then um, they went around. I had a show at, in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. It was a two-hour stage show. Uh, it was on tour at the time. And uh, they came down there, they seen me, they liked me, they liked what I did, and then they told me what the uh, show was about. I turned it down uh, several times, and then uh, they continued to talk to me and call me, and I talked to some fellow colleagues, and uh, we finally came to, uh, myself, we came to the uh, idea that it would be better to work with the Fox Network as magicians and as, as opposed to work against them because they were going to do the show anyway. The knowledge is out there. Uh, they knew how to get their magic illusions. They really didn't need a magician. Uh, you know, this is, this is Hollywood. They create magic. Mm -hmm. um, so when I stepped in is when they agreed to let's have a compromise on what's going to be on the show, how it's going to be revealed. And that's when I decided, all right, because uh, some, I was going to be a fall guy. And I knew this in, in, in magician's eyes and public's eyes. However, uh, I was making a big step for the art of magic. Yeah. Of that's course. how it came to be. You know, the show was a huge hit. I was a big fan. Randy's a big fan of the show. You know, you caught a lot of uh, bad press, though, from fellow music, uh, magicians. I think it was because oh, they, yeah. you know, they just didn't understand why you actually did it, you know. It's my understanding mm -hmm. that it was actually to promote magic 
and to get the younger generation interested in the trade. Am I right? No, that is, is absolutely right. And one, that is one of the things that has happened, but not just, you know, like here in the States, but all over the world. Um, it brought more people into magic. You got people really in, interested in magic. There's more magicians today than ever before. Um, so I didn't go in to go and hurt the art of magic or anything, but you are right. The magicians didn't get it. And what they fell for was the uh, publicity that was set up by uh, the network. And magicians just fell right into it. And actually, in hindsight, it was all really a good thing because they got magicians actually talking, even though it was negative and everything, uh, but it put magicians all over the world talking to each other. And they created some organizations uh, to find out what the law is about copywriting illusions and uh, trying to stop these kind of shows. And they learned a lot, uh, finding out that it was really hard, they can't copyright things, they couldn't stop the shows, um, you know, it wasn't trade secrets like, uh, you know, some businesses or, you know, trade secrets are involved. So there was a, it was a time of a lot of education for established magicians, and then it was uh, it opened doors for new magicians. You know, like Robert said, any any time that show's on, we'll watch it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I just get mesmerized by it, and uh, you're just a cool cat, man, when you're up there doing your thing. Uh, it's just awesome. <laughs> you're like, wow, that's cool. I bet I've seen each one of them probably ten times, and... How long, uh, how long does it take to film one of them shows, and, and how much secrecy goes into it? Yeah, you know, uh, especially with all, especially in the beginning. Well, originally it was just going to be one, one one hour show. That's what it was. It was one TV special, but then ratings went through the roof, and there was so much interest uh, in in the show and what was happening with the publicity. It just took a life on of its own, and then. Another special came, then another special came, the ratings were doing great, uh, five specials came, and then uh, I wound up doing a 13-hour uh, uh, series uh, with uh, here in, in the United States. And um, that was a complete surprise. Everything was a complete surprise. You know, originally, I just thought it was going to be one show, it would be done, it would be gone, and that'll be the end of it, but it still hasn't ended. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now I read that there's like a, a comic book coming out called The Masked Magician. Now, is that based on you? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah it, it actually, yeah, it's a graphic novel, and uh, um, it's not actually based on me, but it is based on the character, where uh, the character uh, is uh, foiled by other magicians, and it goes back into the history of magic, and I don't know, there's some twists and turns, and uh, yeah, there's some pretty fun projects uh, you know, coming up like that. Yeah, you were on a, a, a Diagnosis Murder, right? Diagnosis Murder actually wrote uh, a TV special around around me and the character and everything. Yep. That's cool. I mean, you've also won a Latin American Academy Award, and you know, that's got, was that for the show, or what was that for? Yeah, yeah well, actually, uh, that was just one for my contribution to uh, the, the arts, uh, in this case being uh, the art of magic, and opening the doors for uh, new magicians, uh, everything the show has uh, contributed to, as well as my um, appearances, just personal appearances on the different TV programs over, like in the, uh, South America. I think the ratings would always go, you know, through the roof. Uh, ratings like they've never seen, and um, so you. Just, so that's where the award the award came in. It was a special. It was a, you know for having a very special show, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I've actually I've received a, a lot of awards for, for those very uh, for those very reasons, and um, now a lot of things have changed. You know, there's a new generation of magicians that have grown up with the show that uh, I, I get mail every day and I try to even answer as many as I can 
And uh, there was one one gentleman, I think he might be from India, and he sent me these videotapes. Of, he's making some of the illusions that he has seen on the show and performing them. And he says he's having a great time, and uh, thank you, thank you for opening the doors. I was just invited to, to be the... Um, there's a magic festival over in the Ukraine uh, coming up, and they want me to be the guest of honor uh, you know, with all these magicians. Well, congratulations so, on that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so the mindset has really changed, and it, that has to do with all the new magicians that are out there now. Yeah. What do you consider to be your proudest moment of your career so far? Um. <laughs> Proudest moment of my career so far is, um, I'd have to say, is the good things that I'm able to do with the character. Uh, what is it, it has allowed me to do because it is the character is so well known, and that is by going to uh, orphanages, uh, hospitals, you know, spending time with, uh, having the opportunity to spend time with the kids and see, see their faces light up. Uh, and I do this in many different countries. Uh, I had a child from the Make-A-Wish Foundation that it was his wish uh, to spend time with me uh, in his uh, troubled days. Um, those type of things have made everything worth it. Besides the great mail I get from all these uh, uh, up-and-coming magicians, you know, uh, asking for various uh, tips and help and, and helping them out is it always brings a smile to my face. Well, Val, do you have any TV specials on the horizon or any big illusions you're working on right now? Uh, what, what I'm working on right now is uh, a couple things. I'm working on uh, the Best Magician uh, Live, which is uh, going to be a world tour. I'm talking with a really big company. I can't say anything about it now. We just started talking last week. But the show is going to be huge, and I'm really putting most of my focus on that at this moment. Um, and then, like I tell you, I spend a lot of time uh, helping uh, different charities and uh, uh, these uh, new magicians that uh, you know, send me questions, and also uh, writing some books. And so I, I stay pretty busy. But, uh, <laughs> it sounds that way. That's part of. Yeah, the best part, though, is what I'm able to, the good things that I'm able to do. And, uh, and it sounds like you're doing like a lot of good things. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank God, yes, I have. And I thank God for that, and I'm grateful to to, to, to do that. Uh, just like in uh, Brazil, we uh, uh, there's a thing called the favelas, and... It is a very dangerous area to go into. Um, it's like the shanty towns area, and um, so I've gone up there and created programs to bring uh, the cultural arts uh, to to these uh, uh, you know underprivileged people, and um, doing th those type of things just makes everything worth it. Well, Val, are there any websites or social media that you have that people can go to and uh, type in to get more information about you and upcoming shows and projects? Oh, yeah. Uh, very easy. Just uh, com. There's a Facebook link. Uh, there's a various other information on there. Um, and you're going to be just put in Val Valentino or, or just put in The Masked Magician, all kinds of things pop in, but at www.themassmagician.com is where most of the information uh, will be putting up on. We're going to make it current uh, as time goes on. Well, Val, it was our pleasure talking with you tonight. Uh, you sound like a very, very genuine and nice man. Uh, we are proud to have you on our show. Oh. Um. Gosh, you guys, thank you so much. And it was an honor to, for me to be here as well. And I hope you have me uh, back. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we'll be looking uh, into your career and, and checking you out along the way. Like I said, we're big fans, me and Randy both. And uh, thank you so much for taking time out. All right. Bob and Randy and all, to all your fans out there, keep listening. 
And uh, thank you guys very, very much. Well, you have a nice evening, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Radio show. Yes, I learned a lot about the history of magic. So I learned about you know Houdini and Thurston and, and uh, the magicians of the uh, early 1900s. Um, so they have a big influence on me because that's from when I was uh, very young. And um, then there came the movie Houdini with Tony Curtis, and I was really taken by by that. You know, this is a question that I've asked myself all the time. You know, we've talked to a lot of professional musicians, and I've always asked them, you know, what happens when you forget your lyrics on stage? You know, what's it like for a magician on stage when something goes wrong? Do you ever get, like, people in the crowd that goes like, hey, I know how you did that, you know you know what I mean? How do you react to something like that? <laughs> well, you know, the thing about magic is, it, and it's that rule of life, you know, if something's going to go wrong, it will. Things go wrong all the time. But when you're a magician, you know that things are going to happen because you're relying on, you know, if it's threads or mechanics or certain angles, and you're relying on certain um, things uh, that uh, shouldn't be seen. So if something can go wrong, please, I actually, I was definitely afraid to uh, perform in front of uh, an audience. Uh, I used to do, I was known as the school magician from uh, elementary school, you know, through uh, college and everything. But uh, in elementary school, I was definitely afraid. Probably I had so much passion to be a magician, it's what scared me uh, the most. So I, I used to learn magic, but I actually wouldn't perform it uh, other than maybe for my classmates, uh, you know, friends and family. Uh, but it wasn't until I was, uh, oh, maybe 10 years old, I started doing uh, parties. And, uh, and little by little, I just started uh, developing the magic and the confidence. And I was a theater major from junior high school to college, and uh, that really helped a lot. But in the beginning, there, there was a lot of fear. Did you have a mentor as you were learning the art, or, or were you self-taught? No, no, yeah, I was self-taught. My brother had a big interest uh, in magic uh, as well, although uh, he never was a performer, uh, but he had an interest in it. So I used to you know, follow him and kind of follow in his uh, footsteps. But my brother was actually a big influence. How, how, did, how, did your, how did your mother and father feel about you doing magic? Um, we, well, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, something you're going to have to really think about, uh, the future and that you're going to have to get a real job some, someday. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I, of course I didn't, uh, want to listen to that and I didn't. And thank goodness, uh, I didn't because, uh, I could have easily gone in other directions, but, uh, I stood, stuck by magic and, uh, still doing it today. You know, who who were your inspirations for magic and, you know, uh, like Houdini and, you know, people like that, Blackstone? Yeah, uh, my uh, inspirations in magic, yeah, they would go back to uh, Houdini because the way I had to learn magic, because it really wasn't very much on television, uh, the, the information wasn't out there. So uh, the library played a big part in my education. So I would read a lot of books, anything about magic. So there was a encyclopedia, and they do. So the magician has to be prepared through his practice. If something does go wrong, how am I going to get out of it? So we prepare for things like this. You would either be taking the trick or illusion into another direction or having an out and have another prop on hand ready to go. So, uh, yeah, when things go wrong, that, that, that plays a big part, and it does happen all the time. 
takes a lot of guts to do magic. Well, how, how many times do you practice an illusion before you unveil it to a crowd? Well, you know, there's a thing um, that, uh, well, you profess, and that is to do perfect practice. That is when you learn something, you're in the learning stages, and then you learn it till it's pretty much perfection. So now is when you know it. So that's when the real practice starts to happen. But once you know something perfectly, then you do perfect practice, and that's when you really push yourself and practice, 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 practice. And then you find out all the things that can go wrong. That helps you be prepared. And then you can focus on... You know, Val, why magic? What got you involved and so taken with being a magician in the first place? Well, I have known that I was a magician from a very early age, and I would say I was a, must have been uh, four or five years old. And it wasn't for any reason uh, other than I loved the, the art of magic. Maybe it comes from a past life. I have no idea, but... Before I even seen my first magician, I knew I was a magician. Do you remember the first time you ever performed in front of a large audience? You know, how was that experience? Was you was you nervous? Oh 